In this video, we're going to talk about signaling with menu reset event. Menu reset event is similar to auto reset event, except that the reset is not automatic. So what do I mean by reset? Let's go back to the auto reset event here. Once the pig go into the station, the feeding station to eat, remember the signal here is automatically turned off. The turning off of the signal is called reset turning on of the signal is called set. The auto reset event just means that when the waiting thread proceeds, the signal is turned off automatically without the developer manually turning off. Whereas in the manual reset event, the developer is responsible to call the method reset in order to turn off the binary signal. It's still a signal with an on and off, two different modes, but you will have to turn it on manually. You will have to turn it off manually as well. So where are the scenarios in real life that we need such such mechanism of signaling? Let's still use this farm analogy here. Previously, we were seeing that only one pig can go into the feeding station, but that's not realistic, right? Realistically, the farmer produces food in batches. It produces a lot of food and probably more than enough for three little pigs to go into the feeding station and eat at the same time. So in that case, we should allow multiple consumers to consume the products at the same time. And some other examples I can think of is, for example, really like traffic light. If we are thinking that each vehicle has stress, and the traffic light will be the signal. Once it turns green, everybody will go at the same time, right? Everybody goes until it turns red again. So it's not one car at a time. Other scenarios I can think of is, for example, a file is produced and the file is huge and you need separate threads to divide and conquer at the same time. Therefore, you will signal those threads to say, go ahead, divide the file and conquer it. And once the file is finished, then we can signal the producer again to say, hey, the file is finished, go ahead and produce more. This is where we use many reset event. And the syntax is pretty similar to auto event. Still here, we're gonna say menu reset event, and then the variable name, let's just call, call it menu reset event. And we're gonna create this. And this is the initial state. For many reset events, there is actually a slim version, so I would encourage you to use the sl slim version instead of the uh, the original version. And here again, you can use the using statement to make sure that the many reset event object is automatically disposed after the program exit. And then at the place where you want to turn on the signal, uh, you call the set method just like the auto reset event. And then at the place, whoever is responsible to turn it off will have to call the reset method to turn it off. So that's the basic syntax. So let's create a very simple application here where let's say three different worker threads are waiting for a signal to proceed. They're all blocked at the beginning until a signal is provided from the main thread. So I'm gonna say four and then use a for loop to create uh, three different threads here and say thread equals new thread and it's going to do some work. So I'm going to do this work, which I will create later and then thread name equals thread I to be either thread one, thread two or thread three. And then I'm going to say thread dot start, start the thread. Now in the main thread, we are going to output some message first so let's say press enter to release all threads right because all of the threads are being blocked at the beginning uh, because the initial state is false and then we're going to say console.reline to wait for the user to press enter and at this moment the main thread is going to set the signal turn on the signal to release Okay, so after the user press read, read line, uh, the main thread is going to signal the worker thread to proceed. 
And then at the very end, we're going to say green line again, uh, just so that we don't automatically exit out. And then over here, we're going to define the work method here. And we can just provide some messages. We're saying which thread, thread.currentthread.name is waiting for the signal. And then here, we use the wait method. So this is uh, the slim version, so it has a wait method. This wait for the signals. So once it receives the signal, then it can process the products that the producer produces. In this case, um, the producer is the main thread, which produces this uh, enter, <laughs> this enter keystroke. Here we can use uh, thread.sleep just to simulate a uh, longer process time. And then here we're gonna say red line. And then we can say whoever over here released. All right, so this is a simple program, although we don't have a reset over here. We don't need to do a reset in this simple example, but it demonstrates that uh, multiple threads be released at the same time. So let's run this. And then you can see that thread one, two, three are waiting and press enter to release all of the threads. So this message is in between and then I don't like that. So may, maybe we can move this console though, right to the top. This will fix this particular issue. Let's run it again. So press enter to release all of the threads and it tells you that all of the three threads are waiting it's like all of the three little pigs are waiting for the food now if i just hit enter um, you can see that after a brief moment the threads are released so this is how the menu reset event works because it is not reset automatically therefore all of the threads are allowed to enter the reason why the auto reset event only allows one thread to enter is really just because it automatically reset it as soon as receives the signal. Right? As soon as one thread receives the signal, the signal is turned off, so no other thread will be able to receive the signal anymore. Here, because the, the reset has to be called manually, therefore all of the threads has an opportunity to enter, right? to pass this wait line. So this is how it works. And then in the next video, we're going to actually practice a little bit using the manual reset event in the next one.